Hello everybody, welcome to my live show, God bless you, I hope everybody is doing okay, God bless your families, God bless you, I hope you had a wonderful Christmas with your families and loved ones, is my sound loud and clear guys, is my sound loud and clear, let me know please. Okay, thank you for the confirmation. How is everybody? Hey, Arana Hanna, Abdul Halik, Peter the Wall, Goat, Eight, Aisha's Quran, Haha, Ku, Hobo Momo, Jan Villegas, Hafza, Idasi, Bill, Maya, Maria, Misbah, Zayd, Salam and Masih. Peace of Christ to all of you, Peter M. M. Lions 31 Green T. Peter M. R. K. Dead Zombie, father of all of you. Everyone who just joined in, sorry if I didn't mention your name, forgive me. Thank you for your support. Thank you for being here. I hope, I really hope you had a healthy and great Christmas. I know a lot of people, especially the Muslims, the ex-Muslims who left Islam, maybe celebrated Christmas all by themselves. But it is what it is, you know. When you leave Islam, uh, you're going to be on your own. You're a person who will be either killed or if you are, have a more moderate Muslim family here in the West, they will force you to leave the house and go live on the streets. Imagine if you are a young kid, you didn't finish school, you don't have a job. What would you do if someday uh, they found out that you left Islam? Let's say your mother finds out you are reading the Bible, she discovers you are reading the Bible and she finds out you are out of Islam. What will happen to you as a young kid or a young girl? Imagine. Put yourself in their shoes, guys. I think it's not going to be very easy. So they have to force you to go live on the streets. So please pray for the Muslims who are not scared to leave this man-made cult. And that's basically the topic of today, guys. The apostasy punishment for Muslims who leave Islam, who become ex-Muslims. And before we start, guys, I want to ask you to pray with me in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So our live show will be blessed today. Pray with me. Dear Lord, bless our beloved audience. Lord, thank you for your grace and thank you for this amazing year. Thank you, Lord, for my lovely audience and subscribers who kept supporting me day in, day out for this last year. Please bless them and their families in this holy month, Lord. Father, enfold us in your arms. Help us not to lean on our own understanding, but in everything acknowledge you, Lord, so that you can direct our words, thoughts, and actions. Give us a measure of your strength, so that we might not give into discouragement, deception, lies, taqiyya, or any doubt. Please, Lord, help us honor you in all our ways. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Loosen my tongue today so I can speak the truth, Lord, without any error or any shame. But the truth and only the truth, Lord, will set us free. Give me wisdom and courage to do whatever needs to be done in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So guys, as we mentioned on this live broadcast today, we'll have the opportunity today to talk about apostasy, punishment in Islam, and what will happen basically to you as a Muslim if you decide someday to leave Islam, this man-made cult, one day in a country like Pakistan, Iran, or let's say a country like Saudi Arabia, where all this horrific man-made religion has started and created by one man and one man alone for himself 
for his own sexual desires. Muhammad, the self-proclaimed prophet of Islam. Today also when we are done teaching, we will allow you to ask questions in the Q&A session with our guests in the live chat. Muslims can also call us live on Skype. Let me open up my Skype guys. Let me open up my Skype. My Skype is open as you see. So if you are, call yourself a Muslim who has the courage and the knowledge to call me live for a life, call me. Let us have a nice respectful discussion. Is that a good deal Muslims? You, are, you can call us live. You can refute us. What about dad? So as you see here in the background, guys, this is a leader of the Ikhwan al-Muslimin, right? The Muslim Brotherhood. He was the leader of the Muslim Brotherhood, Ikhwan al-Muslimin, right? He said, quote unquote, if they had got rid of apostasy punishment, this is not my words, this is the words of this guy, Yusuf, Dr. Yusuf al-Qaradawi, an al-Azhari Sheikh, a PhD from Al-Azhar, he was the leader of the Muslim Brotherhood. He said, quote unquote, if they had got rid of the apostasy punishment in Islam, Islam would have not existed today. I think uh, finally we see a Sheikh who is actually very honest here. Right Muslims? He was actually honest here. If Islam had no apostasy punishment, i.e. death, death, the penalty, death, if you leave Islam, you will die. Islam would have been already exist, not existed today. It would have been dead by now. Yeah. So he's, he's, he's correct, man. And you know, you remember my debate with that Muslim uh, warrior guy? You remember my debate with him? He said, no, no, you know, Muhammad uh, didn't uh, force people uh, to be killed. Uh, he didn't say to his Sahaba to kill uh, uh, Muslims who leave Islam. You are right, you liar. You have no shame, you have no dignity. When you reject the facts in Islam. Right? Yeah, it's, uh, Jason Palmer, you're correct, my friend. Islam only grows, only grows, and only grows because of birth rates. Real people in 2019, it's almost 2020, you cannot tell me that honest, sincere human beings accept Islam for what it is. No. It's birth rates and it's what, because of apostasy, Muslims are not leaving Islam. The apostasy pen, penalty to be specific. You leave Islam, they will give you three days, three days to repent. You don't repent. You will die. Take it or leave it. You don't repent in three days, you will die. That's what Sharia law is all about. Right? If you live in a country like, uh, let's say, Saudi Arabia, they will give you three days. You don't repent, you die. It's over for you. Right, uh, Mr. It's, it's, we have a Muslim, it's 702. You can confirm that, right? Or are you going to use taqiyah now? Uh, it's, can you confirm what I what just said? Don't be a coward. I know you are a coward. You will never ever call me. But can you confirm? Can you give me a one? And say, yeah, that is true. We, uh, uh, they will give you three days. They will give you three days on the Sharia law. They will give you three days. Yeah, Mr. 8702. Mr. 8702. Mayday, mayday. They will give you three days. You don't leave us. You don't come back to Islam. You don't repent. You will die. Uh, our key, um, it's everywhere. If you, if you have, a, if you are living in a country under Sharia law, under Islamic Sharia law, you'll get three days, right? But you know, they are hypocrites. Sometimes they don't even listen to their own Sharia law, right? Some Muslim countries, they will put you in jail for many years. And after five, de five years, they will, they might decide, okay, it's now time. After they stopped torturing you for five years in the, in, in the jail, right? They torture, they torture the hell out of you. They even bind your hands and feet 
to the ceiling with a rope and they beat the hell out of you. Right, Muslims? Merry Christmas to everybody, to including to you, Mr. Scammer 7. Salam al Masih Habibi. Salam wa na'ma. Na'ad alayk bil afrah wal mahabbi. That's how we say it. Merry Christmas in Arabic, guys. Salam al Masih. Peace of Christ to all of you. So you want to follow Islam that might kill you if you decide one day to leave this man-made cult and the proof is in front of you because the apostasy punishment Muslims are still in Islam the scare tactics right and today guys I wanted to talk about this gentleman this poor guy this poor guy his name is Junaid Junaid Hafiz Junaid Hafiz and this guy is sentenced to death he is sentenced to death let me tell you about this person if you didn't hear, hear already about him Mr. Junaid Hafiz is a Pakistani university visiting lecturer and graduate student who has who was convicted of blasphemy what of blasphemy under Pakistani's broad blasphemy laws and he was sentenced to death he was arrested imagine he was arrested in the year 2013 right in the year 2013 that's like six years ago so, almost seven years ago he was arrested and tortured and almost beaten to death in jail over and over and he was accused of committing blasphemy insulting the prophet wait a second Muslims here is a very sincere question from my side a sincere question how how do you call something blasphemy again guys focus with me how do you call so something blasphemy if you are insulting a man like Muhammad insulting a man like Muhammad how is that blasphemy how is this blasphemy? Anyone can explain? Any Muslim can explain to me how it's blasphemy when you are insulting a guy like Muhammad. When we ask Muslims, who is Muhammad? They say to you, he is a man like you and me. He is a man. He is a man. So how is it blasphemy? Why is this guy in jail for insulting a man like Muhammad? Please explain this to me. Maybe I'm stupid. Maybe I'm dumb. Tell me. Tell me how you can be called a blasphemer like this poor guy, Junaid Hafiz, who was arrested in the year 2013, waiting to die for his crime as a blasphemer. Please explain to me how you are called a blasphemer if you insult a man not a god a man like muhammad go ahead call me i'm live call me i'm live my skype is open my skype id is the rob christian call me live and please explain to me why this guy is called a blasphemer only because he insulted muhammad your prophet I, last time I checked, you Muslims claim that Muhammad is only a man. He's not your God, right Muslims? Please go ahead and explain to me. Explain to Rob Christian and to, and to our beloved audience who are watching now. How are you going to call this poor guy, this Mr. Junaid Hafiz, who was arrested in 2013, a blasphemer if he only insulted a man like you and me, Muhammad? Clearly, yes, Pena Saran, clearly Muhammad must be equal to Allah. Right, Muslims? Muhammad must be equal to Allah. This is why you are calling this guy a blasphemer. Right, Muslims? You cannot deny that, right? You see the logic in Islam, guys? Do you see the logic in Islam? You are called a blasphemer because you are insulting a man. 
Next, next, if we insult, God forbid, if we insult Phil Herrera, we will be called blasphemers. If we insult Christian Prince, we will be called blasphemers. Yes, exactly, Peter M. Muslims have two gods. They have Allah and they have Muhammad. Two gods. Shirk, exactly. And the proof is in the Quran. Let me show you why you have, must be killed. Why you are called a blasphemer. If we go to chapter 48, I cannot bring this enough, guys, to you. This ayah, uh, 48.9. Here is why you all have to be killed, guys. Watch. Here is the reason why you have to be killed and called a blasphemer in Islam if you insult Muhammad. It says in this ayah, chapter 48, ayah 9 from Surah Al-Fatih. لِتُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَتُعَزِّرُهُ وَتُوَقِّرُهُ وَتُسَبِّحُهُ بُكْرَةً وَاصِيلًا You have to believe in Allah and Muhammad and you have to assist Muhammad in battle, you have to honor and respect Muhammad and you have to glorify Muhammad tasbih for the Prophet every morning and evening. A bam! This is why Muslims one day insult Muhammad or even Christians if you live in the Middle East, if you insult Muhammad and let's say you repent, you say sorry, I didn't mean it, still they are allowed to kill you. You will not be forgiven because Muhammad, the Rasul, is God in Islam. He's equal to Allah, according to this ayah. Why? Because when we went to school in the Middle East as Arabic speakers like me, we learned that the last men mentioned person in a sentence like this, in an ayah like this, the last person, all the words that come after in one sentence like this, are addressed and only and only for the last person so you have to assist muhammad the rasul according to grammar rules arabic grammar rules you have to assist muhammad in battle you have to honor and respect him and you have to do tasbih you have to glorify the prophet the messenger bam this is why muslims must kill you if you insult the prophet they have to call you blasphemer if you insult the Prophet. Subhanallah. No, no, I meant to say Subhan Muhammad, right Muslims? Subhan Muhammad. Tasbih. Hamli Muhammad, right Muslims? You see why, why, guys, from now on, from now on, in 2020, from now on, we are almost in a new year, we should stop calling Muslims Muslims. Call them Muhammadans. Call them Muhammadans because they are worshippers of Muhammad. Right? Do you agree? The proof is in front of you, right guys? Stop calling Muslims Muslims. They are Muhammadans. This is the new name in 2020 for all the Muslims. They have to worship Muhammad and glorify him every morning and evening glorify who glorify the prophet every morning and evening and the proof is in front of you. these are not my words these are the words in the quran this is quran muslims don't say this is rob christian if you say you are lying or christian i challenge you right here right now live to call me on my skype and prove me wrong Yalla ya akhwan, yalla yalla yalla, yalla 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 yalla, come on, come on. Christmas is over. Don't say you are still celebrating Christmas. Right? Don't say you are still celebrating Christmas, Muslims. I know many of you have celebrated Christmas with us, I know. For example, that the football or soccer player, what is, what is his name? Who's, who's playing in Liverpool. Have you seen his picture, guys? Have you seen the picture of Muhammad Salah? Celebrating Christmas. Didn't you see that? Let me show you guys. I mean, Muslims are proud about this guy because finally you have a Muslim who is playing football or soccer. Call it what you, what you want to call. Look, this, it's this guy. Mm. 
Can I get a better quality picture? I think I can. Let's see, this one maybe is better. Okay, you see, you see? Celebrating Christmas with his Muslim wife or daughter. I don't know if maybe this is his daughter or, or, or I don't know who she is. Anyway, I think it's his daughter and his other daughter. You see the Christmas tree? You see, the, you see the, the hypocrite Muslims? You see that? Sport is haram, akhi. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you see, you see these hypocrites? You, when you see this guy before the match starts, before the football match starts, this guy is going, is praying on the field, doing uh, Al-Fatiha, right? Reciting Al-Fatiha, the ch chapter number one, before the actual game starts. But when, you see him, he's celebrating Christmas, man. This is his house. Right, Muslims? You see the hypocrisy? His wife just left school. I, I, do you think this is his wife? I, don't, I, I, I really don't know. I think it's his daughter. I'm not sure. Anyway, but do you see, guys? Do you see why you should stop calling Muslims Muslims? They are Mohammedans. This is why Christians in the Middle East call Muslims Mohammedans. We came with that name. We started calling them Mohammedans. Yes, we, Christians in the Middle East who speak Arabic, who understood the Quran better than the Muslims. Yeah, Muslims do like Christmas. So let us go back. So this poor guy is sentenced to jail. He's sentenced to jail. Uh, guys, I got a phone call. Let me pick it up. I'll be right back. Give me a couple of seconds. Guys, um, I will get a visitor. My brother will come and visit me. So I'm not sure how long I will stay live. So when he knocks on the door, that means the live show is over. But it will continue, guys. So this guy, <clears throat> Mr. Junaid Hafiz, is sentenced to death because he insulted the Prophet. And he's called a blasphemer. Can you imagine? So he's in jail. He was arrested in 2013 and was accused of being a blasphemer, insulting Muhammad. How are you a blasphemer if you insult a man like Muhammad, Muslims? Ah, because Muhammad is your God, as stated in chapter 48, ayah 9, right, Muslims? You have to glorify, do tasbih every morning and evening for the Rasul, right? This is why, right, Muslims? I understand. So this guy, Junaid Hafiz, academic, sentenced to death for blasphemy in Pakistan, as you see. And this is according to the section 295C of the Pakistani Penal Code. The Pakistan Penal Code. It says, whoever, guys pay attention, read with me, focus with me. Whoever by words, either spoken or written, or by visible representation, or by any imputation, inundu, or insinuation, directly or indirectly, defiles the sacred name of the Holy Prophet Muhammad. Did you catch it? They are calling him Holy Prophet. Last time we checked, there's nothing called Muqaddas in Islam. There's nothing called Muqaddas in Islam. The Quran is not holy, the Quran is not Muqaddas. And Muhammad is certainly not the Holy Prophet. He's not the Muqaddas Prophet. So here they are lying in their own laws. In the Pakistani laws. This is the Pakistani law, guys. So if you defile the sacred name of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, Allah is praying on him. There's nothing called be peace be upon him. It's Allah prays on the Prophet. Allah is the slave of Muhammad. You see? Even Allah is the slave of Muhammad, shall be punished with death or imprisonment for life 
and shall also be liable to fine. So they will give him a fine. Do you see? This is the Pakistani law. The Pakistani government law. Do you see it? So he's called Al-Muqaddas Prophet. That's a lie. And if you insult, you defile the name of Muhammad, you'll be killed. Do you understand why this guy is in jail now? That's why. This is, this is a religion, guys, or is this a political ideology? Is Islam a political ideology or is it a religion, Muslims? Clearly, Islam is a man-made political ideology to keep Muslims under control, right? And there's also a uh, petition that you can sign. Let me give you the link, guys. Maybe this can help. You never know. Let me give you the link. You can sign a petition. Already 11,080 people have signed. So if you like to do that, go ahead, guys. You know, so Islam is actually created to control people. You commit a action that is against Islam, they will torture you, they will slap you, they will can you, they will put you in jail, they will sentence you to death. You know, when we ask this a question, this question to, to the shiuch, and I went to this website, islamqna.info, let me give you the link too, so you can do your own study about this very topic why death is the punishment for apostasy the que that's the question to this sheikh muhammad salah al munajjid the sheikh of this website islamqna.info he is a, a phd sheikh and this is his fatwa number 811 the question has been asked several times for non-muslims and i want to find an answer so this is a muslim asking this question why when the muslim convert to another religion a, he becomes a murtad and apostate why should he be, ki be killed? And here is the answer from the Shaykh, Shaykh Muhammad Salah al Munajjid. Alhamdu to Muhammad, I mean to Allah. Alhamdu to Muhammad, I mean Allah. Your question might be answered by the following points. This is the ruling of Allah Himself and Muhammad. Why not only Allah? Because Muhammad is equal to Allah, right, Muslims? As the Prophet, Allah is praying on him, said, Whoever changes his religion, kill him, reported by Al-Bukhari. You see it? This is the hadith that you can find. Let me give you Sahih Al-Bukhari is better. You can find this hadith, guys, in Sahih Al-Bukhari. You can find it in, in, uh, in Nisa'i too. Here is Sahih Al-Bukhari hadith. And Muhammad saying, this is Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 6922. Let me give you the link, the reference for that too. Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 6922. Sahih, Sahih, Sahih al-Bukhari. Muhammad said, according to Muhammad, he said, quote unquote, Muhammad saying, whoever changed his Islamic religion, then kill him. This is the second source to go to after the Quran, right Muslims? Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih hadith. So as mentioned here, reported by al-Bukhari. Do you see it? So this is the Shaykh speaking, not me. This is the ruling of Allah and his Lord, the Messenger Muhammad. Right Muhammadans, right Muhammadans, right? The one who has known the religion which Allah revealed, entered it and practiced it. So if you become a Muhammadan, then you reject it, despise it and left it. It is a person who does not deserve to live. Did you catch it? You, are, you do not deserve to live on this earth of Allah and eat from the provision of Allah. So you must die. So you deserve to die. According to the Shaykh. Shaykh Muhammad Salah al-Manaj. So number one, you 
must die if you change your religion you must die you don't deserve to live if you change your religion by leaving islam the apostates opens the way number three by leaving islam the apostate opens the way for everyone who wants to leave the faith so you become an example so this is why you must die you're actually making other muslims to think about leave islam if you do it this is why you must die that's point number three the apostates is not to be called without a warning so they will give you a three-day warning even though his crime is so great so it's even greater than killing someone guys it's so great he's given a last chance a respite of three days in which to repent if you repent and you become a muslim again in three days he will be left alone if he does not repent then he will be killed bam do you see it and so on and so on see muhammad himself said it whoever changes religion kill him right muslims so Actually, Muhammad, when he created Islam, guys, he came with a huge plan. And he came with his plan of scare tactics of this cult. Islam. If you insult me, Muhammad saying, if you insult me, even if you repent, you will die anyway. Insulting the Prophet results in death and you're called a blasphemer. Why? Because Muhammad is the God of Islam. He's equal to Allah. Right? See the scare tactics? Punishment of the grave. You remember punishment of the grave, right? Two angels come and try to test you. See if you are a true Muslim. If you can't answer all three questions correctly, they start to bring the huge sledgehammer down on you. Right? With the sledgehammer. Two angels. I mean, what's the point, Muslims? How can you be punished when you are already die when you are when you are already dead in your grave? How does it hurt? How does it hurt when you are already? Well, how do you feel anything when when you when you are dead in your grave? That doesn't make sense. But anyway, and we know Muhammad actually got this idea from two Jewish ladies, right? Two Jewish ladies came to lie. To troll actually Aisha. And Aisha she was smart. She noticed these two, two Jewish ladies are trolling me. And she went to her husband. When the two Jewish ladies left. Right. They were laughing. <laughs> we just told Aisha a joke. Let's see if Muhammad will buy it. Let's see if Muhammad bought it. Because they knew everything the Jews tell to Muhammad. Muhammad take it, copy it and put it in Islam. Right. It becomes Islam. So two, the two Jewish lady left after telling the joke to Aisha, trolling Aisha. Aisha went to her husband, Muhammad, and she told him, have you heard about punishment of the grave? He said, yeah, this is true. So from that moment on, even Muhammad started to fear the punishment of the grave. Right? Right, the Muhammadans. So you got a troll idea, right? A joke from the Jews, and you made it Islam. Number three, implementing a death penalty for everybody, for anyone who leaves Islam. If you become an apostate, you will die. They will give you three days. If you don't repent, they will kill you. Even your dad can kill you. Even your brother can kill you. Even your mother can kill you. Your cousins can kill you. Your own family are allowed to kill you. If you leave Islam. So you see how when you create a false cult, guys, when you create a cult, a man-made cult like Islam, you're going to implement scare tactics to make your followers not leave Islam. So you can control them for the rest of their lives, for their miserable lives. Right, the Mohammedans? So, you know, everything that, you know, you will be punished, you so. But incest in Islam is okay, right, Muslims? I mean, Mohammedans, right? 
you you can have sex with your own daughter in Islam. That's okay, that's halal. But the moment you decide to leave Islam, you will die. Right, Muslims? You, you see the logic? You see the logic, Muslims? And we mentioned this in an earlier live show, guys. According to this PhD sheikh, an Egyptian PhD sheikh says, you can have sex with your illegitimate daughters, a daughter that is conceived out of zina, which is fornication or adultery. So let's, let's say you have a girlfriend, right? A secret girlfriend, you go F her, you go have sexual intercourse with her, and you get a daughter from that unlawful relationship, right? And you get a daughter, you are allowed to F your own daughter because she is technically not your own daughter. Right, Muslims? This is Islam. You can have sex, you can have incest with your own daughter in Islam. It's also in the Quran, chapter 25, ayah 54. Go read the tafsir by Al-Qurtubi. Right? So, it's not allowed to insult Muhammad. Right? You'll be punished if you, you know, in the grave if you are a non-Muslim, you don't know Muhammad, you don't know Islam, right? They will pun you'll be punished. And one of the reasons is also is urine, right? If you pee and you don't clean up, you'll be punished in your grave. Lord have mercy. This is true story, guys. This is true story. And they will kill you if you leave Islam. It's haram to leave Islam. It's a huge sin. You will be punished. But incest in Islam is okay, brother. Halal, brother. Incest in Islam is halal, brother. Yes, brother. You can have sex with your own daughter if she's conceived out of legal marriage. Legal Sharia marriage. Right, Muslims? F her, bro. She is technically not your daughter. Alcohol is haram. All kind of things. Uh, TM cross pose. But you know, the moment you decide to leave this man made cult, they will kill you. But having sex with your own daughter is, is okay, brother. It's okay, brother. Go ahead, brother. So clearly, Dr. Yusuf Al Qaradawi was actually honest here. Islam would have not existed today if they removed the apostasy punishment. I got a phone call, guys. Just a second. So as you see, guys, as you see, Islam is nothing but a man-made cult who forces Muslims to stay in this man-made cult, right? And they have to implement all kind of scare tactics to this man-made cult and we mentioned three points, to control you and keep you in this man-made cult. Right? Right, Muslims? Muhammadans. Guys, thank you for watching. I really have to go. Sorry for this very short live show, but, you know, it's better than nothing. You know, this is, these are really busy months. Uh, my brother will come and visit me. Thank you for watching. Please bear with me. I really didn't want it to be this short, but at least we are together again. I see that my friends and family in Christ are all healthy and are still all supporting us, our work, even if it's very short like today. Please forgive me. Stay safe. Be blessed. Hopefully we will see each other in 2020 again. Maybe even sooner we'll see if I'm going to do another live show. God bless you. God bless your families. Have a healthy and blessed 2020. Stay safe in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God bless you and your families. To the Muslims, Islam is nothing but a man-made cult. Created to control you and to keep you in this man-made cult. Muhammad created Islam for his own sexual desires and to control women 
and men. Please come back home to Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Please open your eyes. Don't be deceived in 2020. Thank you for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe, smash that like button, help me to help you, download our videos, click on the notification bell to receive notifications. Thank you for watching. Lord willing, we'll see each other very soon again. God bless.